We are so honored in the household of David Mercy Conference 2022. Let's tonight welcome the president of Eternity Network International, Apostle Joshua Silver Nima. says they go from strength to strength everyone that appears before the Lord in Zion bless him in the spirit ask him for a visitation and an encounter tonight is someone praying everywhere inside outside speak to our hearts oh God hallelujah I sincerely believe with all my heart that when we tabernacle in the presence of God like we have done and are doing feasting upon the mysteries of the kingdom it becomes impossible for us to live defeated lives or lives that are unable to reflect the glory and the power of God most times believers do not give God enough time to build to make to refine to furnish praise the name of the Lord it takes time to grow it takes time for God to refine and to build a man. It takes time to drive deep into the things of God. But if and when you can sacrifice that time, the reward is His grace, His power, His wisdom, so evident upon your life. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only your breath in my lungs so i pour out my praise pour out my praise it's your breath in my lungs so i pour out my praise to you only turn that song into a declaration you are the breath that is within me, my life. It's your breath in my lungs, so I pour out my praise, pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs, so I pour out my praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, Holy God. 
Father, we declare that you alone are God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We worship you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I ask, O oh God, that within the few minutes that we have to share this truth of your word, open our eyes, open up our spirits, let the sick be healed, let the oppressed be delivered, let our joy be full tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Just listen to what I'm saying. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord, mighty are you, Lord, great are you, Lord, it's your strength in my life, so I pour out my praise, I pour out my praise, it's your strength in my life so I pour out my praise to you only great are you Lord Shilaski Lama Shalianda Brahaski great are you Lord great are you Lord Say a great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. And with my hands lifted up, I will worship my King. And with my hands lifted up, I come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why I'll just tell them I love you my king oh I just tell them we love Hallelujah You have won the victory Hallelujah Hallelujah Distracted. This is part of the meeting. Yeah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah.
one to the one upon the throne I raise my sound I raise my sound for you are God and God alone hallelujah hallelujah Now unto the Lamb upon the throne, I raise my sound, I raise my sound. Over the nations of the earth, hallelujah. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. For you are God alone From before time began You are on your throne You are God alone You are God alone, are God alone. From before time began Father, we pray that tonight your spirit will invade our lives, grant us all that it takes to manifest the fullness of joy. We pray that Jesus will forever be glorified in our lives, through our lives, from our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the sake of our time, I will just be giving a charge and then we'll pray so that we walk with time but i want you to be very sensitive to what the holy spirit is doing i really sense in my heart that there are people who came here trusting and believing that god is able to lift burdens and open them up particularly i know there are impartations while I sat down there I saw jars and vessels and every time your heart is truly open to the Spirit of God except you do not believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit there are many spirits but this one is by that spirit hallelujah When you wait and tabernacle with God, it is impossible for you to go back the same. When Moses stayed with him, he had that encounter and he returned back and his face. I believe that there are some of you who came here with hunger and you're saying, Lord, I need to step into a deeper level a deeper spiritual level a deeper experience beyond just church beyond the ritual of spirituality i desire an encounter and can i tell you this i'll go to my church shortly but the lord in this time is looking for men and women that he can find 
to invest superior dimensions of his grace there are graces there are mantles there are anointings there are dimensions there are virgin dimensions in the spirit waiting for men and women who can pay that price of passion that price of desire that price of love for Jesus above and beyond any other thing so let me just pray over your life and then we'll get to the Word of God the Spirit of the Lord is ministering to me there are at least 11 people that I'm seeing and the Lord is saying he's beginning a new experience listen carefully from this conference and the power of God I'm just seeing a river rushing and it's coming on 11 of those people please I want you to hold them just bring them out for me 11 of them there is a river it is by the Spirit ministers of the gospel men and women alike it is even by the Spirit of the Living God Sing hallelujah to the King. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Emmanuel, please bring them out. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called. There are two people I'm seeing here. God is opening you up to the prophetic ministry. You have been praying. You have been fasting. You came for this meeting with a hunger and a desire. In the name of Jesus, that grace, that rain is coming upon you because you are stepping into a new season. You are ending one phase and indeed beginning another with the Spirit. Don't be distracted. Two people. A grace and an unction. You do not look like it. Except that when the fire of the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. Up front, let me prophesy speed upon someone and then we'll sit down. Please, ushers, I want you to help them because they will begin to run. It's a prophetic message that God is taking away delay. I stretch my hands for men and women who have been in the same position by the spirit of the living God I stretch my hands right now may that grace and that unction from the front to the back the left to the right everyone whose destiny has been kept in the same position I come by the ministry of the spirit and I declare speed 
take that grace now in the name of Jesus please help them speed in ministry speed help that woman please and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel. In the name of Jesus, I put 10 years in one year for you. 10 years in one year. Perez Ketekete Bakatusia. fullness of joy I'd like you to pray just one prayer and then we'll sit whatever it will take for my joy to be full let it be made manifest to me by the spirit tonight lift your voice and pray please lift your voice and pray are you praying Following online, pray. Pray. You are parting ways with that which makes for sorrow. You are parting ways with that which makes for pain. You are parting ways with that which makes for limitation. songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say I am strong in the strength I will trust in you, I will trust in you, let the weak say I am strong, pray for everyone who is out here, those who are at the aisles that grace and that impartation that has come upon you it will not be a waste of time it will not be a ceremony you will walk in keeping with this grace in the name of jesus christ amen and amen please be seated blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah praise the name of the lord john chapter 16 and verse 24 let me give a charge there i'm hearing a name bukola who is bukola bukola i'm hearing a name bukola you are a worker in this church you are in the ushering department this is what i'm seeing is there someone like that you are a worker in this church bukola is there somebody like that your name is bukola huh In the name of Jesus, what do you do, madam? Yes. Huh? Can I pray for you? I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. And in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I stretch my hands and I pray. According to the time of life, may this grace that lifts May that grace shift you now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never, never remain in the same position. I prophesy to you that God is satisfying the longing of your heart. And I release that grace upon you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please bring for me a gentleman and a lady that shouts now loud under the anointing one gentleman one lady there is a gentleman the hand of God is coming upon him it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only my dear the lord is visiting your family in the name of jesus christ the things that he has revealed to your family this is the season of manifestation and this is what the Lord is saying in the name of Jesus according to Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1 this is the prophetic word that God is bringing to your family that the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken that which God said may he bring to pass in your life in the name of Jesus the Christ of God please sit down John chapter 16 and verse 24 let the Lord just charge our hearts tonight and then we'll be done for the moment the Bible says he that told have ye asked nothing in my name Jesus is speaking then he says ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full he reveals an issue and he provides the solution pay attention now Jesus is speaking here not a prophet not an apostle Jesus himself he's saying as I look at you I see that there is a deficiency there are things you do not have he that told there are limitations in your life that is tampering with your joy he says hitherto before now until this revelation came to you you have not sustained the intelligence to ask in my name and so he gives you a solution he says for you to have the fullness of joy there is a relationship between asking receiving and the fullness of joy you do not need answers and results to have joy but you need results to have the fullness of joy you can joy and glory even in the midst of pain you can joy and glory even in the midst of sadness but to have the fullness of joy it must be in the presence of an evidence that demonstrates the faithfulness of God please keep that scripture there so Jesus is speaking now he's saying there are two spiritual realities that are responsible for the fullness of joy number one ask number two receive and he gives you a guarantee that if you engage the mystery of asking and if you truly receive it sustains the ability to make your joy complete you would think this is a very simple scripture Jesus was talking to intelligent people who before now had asked him a lot of questions and yet he's telling them you have not asked me anything so what were they doing that means there is something about asking we do not understand are you together now Jesus is saying if it is true that you know how to ask he leaves you with a guarantee that you will receive and then he says receiving as a product of asking has a way of making your joy complete in Matthew chapter 7 and when you read from verse 7 and 8 Jesus said ask and it shall be given 
it will never be given to you just like that the giving is a harvest the seed is asking he said if you ask it shall be given if you seek you will find if you knock the door will be open because the law is in verse 8 for everyone how many people this is not something that is privy to ministers there are certain spiritual realities that are privy to those in the fivefold or manifesting priesthood privy to certain people but when it has to do with asking and receiving it is a privilege for everyone it says for everyone that asketh receiveth that means if you do not receive it is because you have not asked you may be talking but that is not asking what then is asking what does it mean to ask knowing that my asking and my receiving is what holds the key to my experiencing the fullness of joy what then is asking and what then is receiving can we look at this for a few minutes because you will be surprised to find out that you have not been asking you have been praying you have been speaking you have been wishing but you have not been asking because scripture says if you truly ask you will receive and when you receive you will know is that true Jesus is speaking when it has to do with asking and receiving he did not leave it to the lecture of the apostles he taught it himself because it is connected to the fullness of our joy is God speaking to us already <laughs> James chapter 4 let's look at what apostle James said about this James 4 let's start from verse 1 here's what James is saying James is discussing something that is among God's people and he's showing how unnecessary it is he starts by saying from whence come wars and fighting among you pay attention to his discourse he says come they not hands even from our lost that war in your members do you know what he's saying he's saying all of this jealousy this bitterness are unnecessary that they are obvious frustrations that come because of gaps and things we desire and not have are you are you getting it now verse 2 he says ye lost and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war because ye have not and the reason ye have not is because you have not still learned how to ask James is teaching us again that up until now that the reason why there is anger, jealousy, petty things among believers is because you do not know that everyone is open to ask and you can have so much so that there is no need being jealous that everything you ever desire that you see in the life of another under a certain condition it can be yours so james is saying that jealousy and anger and wishing is because of a secret frustration of your attempt to do what you call asking and your inability to receive is what makes you get angry and say so how are you now doing it because i tried it in secret and it did not work and he's saying the simple reason why you do not have just keep verse two we'll go to verse three later on he says ye have not why because ye ask not ladies and gentlemen my question tonight is what does the bible mean by asking because asking looks like a simple english expression and yet the bible is telling us here that many people have not asked jesus himself I'm, I'm ready to answer you if what you do is truly asking are we learning now what does it mean to ask it's a charge tonight you will be amazed at how many believers do not get results in their christian experience they offer prayers they say things they believe they are talking to god they communicate requests and clearly there are no results that come back and the bible is saying something is missing in your understanding of asking because every time you ask there should be a receiving and that in your receiving and having 
your joy is complete. The prayer ministry in many churches and many, you know, Christian assemblies continue to decline because there is a secret frustration in the hearts of members. They feel we are praying, dissipating energy, saying a lot of things to a deity that claims he loves us. And how difficult is this thing that God cannot step in and solve? And yet in the midst of all our talking, God is saying, you have not asked me anything. Because every result you get is the one you truly asked. So what was I doing with my prayer request? What was I doing with my verbalizing my pain? Are we learning now? What does it mean to ask? Let me give you three points under this. And then we find somewhere to pray. If you are with me, please say amen. amen. Number one. To ask, generally speaking, means to request information or to request an answer by saying or by writing the general definition of asking to ask means number one to request information or to request an answer usually by saying or speaking or by writing so we understand in a general sense that when you use words either by speaking it or writing it and it's intended to give you access to an information or provide an answer. We call it asking. Number two, what does it mean to ask? To ask means to invite and to allow into your space. Listen carefully now. When you ask, you give authorization that whatever it is you are asking, you are allowing it to find expression into your space to ask means to invite is that true when a gentleman comes to meet a young lady and says i want to marry you they say the gentleman is asking her out they won't say he's talking to her no he's asking he's extending an invitation come into my space and into my destiny to ask means to invite or to allow into your space. This is a very powerful definition. That means many of the negative things that step into our lives, many times we ask for them. Now, you will not believe and you will not agree now, but based on this definition, that asking is also an invitation. You can extend an invitation to trouble, to sorrow, and say, come, whereas you did not intend for it to come. One of the ways that we ask catastrophe to come into our lives is through ignorance. Ignorance is a system of asking for what you do not want. Disobedience, for instance, is a system of asking for what you do not want. When you walk in ignorance, the Bible says in Ephesians 4 and verse 18, having their understanding darkened, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them by the blindness, because of the blindness of their hearts. Are we learning now? Yes. So asking means to invite or to allow into your space the third definition i will give you is that asking means to inquire the price or the cost of a thing when you ask it means you are making an inquiry you want to know the price or the cost of a thing that means when you go to the market and you say this is beautiful usually you would say how much you are asking you know that as beautiful as it is, there is a price connected to it. You will not just pick it and go because you want it. So asking means you are inquiring to know the price or to know the cost, the cost factor. 
when you say you are asking it means you desire an information or you desire an answer number two when you say you are asking it means you are extending an invitation to possibilities of any kind to find expression in your space number three when you are asking it means you seek to understand the cost dimension of whatever it is that you need to see manifest in your life are we together the next question I seek to answer is what do you ask for because the Bible says ask it looks very simple but what exactly does the Bible intend for us to ask for Mark chapter 11 and verse 24 Please help us mark 11 and 24 here's what he says jesus now again therefore i say unto you we are examining what can i ask he says what things soever ye desire this is how far your asking can go what things soever ye desire when you pray believe that you receive them and thou shalt have them so what can i ask what things soever I desire that pertains unto life according to 2nd Peter 1 and verse 3 everything I need that pertains to life and godliness that it can come to me at the instance of asking what do we ask for all things that pertain unto life and godliness all things increase growth prosperity wisdom it is at the instance of your asking and receiving the bible says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 i believe god is able to make all grace abound towards you why so that ye always having all sufficiency not wanting in anything it says may abound to every good work there are tools you need to abound to every good work and he's saying that it is within the power of your father to make those tools available he calls them all sufficiency so that you are sufficient lacking in nothing so what do we ask for everything that is required for life for godliness for an effective christian life as far as you're walking in victory is concerned and as far as your your role in kingdom advance is concerned the third question very quickly that i want us to ask and answer is from whom do we ask because god is not the only person who has ears to hear the Bible is full of many people who ask different people. Let's verify who you have been asking. Don't take for granted that it's God you have been talking to. We have to verify. Who have you been talking to? James chapter 1 from verse 5, then we jump to 17. James chapter 1, we we'll start from verse 5. Please read with me. Ready? One to read. If any one of you lack, stop, stop. Don't worry about what you lack. You can lack wisdom, but you can lack many other things. We are dealing with lack. Don't worry about the object that was used here. If any of you lack, what should he do? The first step to asking, I'm coming there, is the realization that there is something you need he says those who ask are not those who want alone but those who realize that there is something lacking in them are we together now there is a posture you must take to ask and receive profitably he says if any of you lack wisdom in this case let him ask of who let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and upbraided not and it shall be given if it is the God of the Bible that you ask he says you can have a guarantee that it will be given to you 
verse 17 why will that be possible because every good gift and every perfect gift comes from not from the bank not from an institution it only comes through the institutions it comes from above come down from the father of light very specific in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning so when we ask we ask God are you sure it's God you have been asking many people ask men many people ask institutions many people ask themselves many people ask the devil and they mistaken their asking to be God he says if it is the father of light you ask he says you shall have it from whom do you ask the father of lights first Timothy 6 and verse 17 this is just a charge tonight first Timothy 6 and 17 it says charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trusting on certain riches but in who the living God that giveth us richly how many things if it is the living God you know that he's the living God you are dealing with because he's a giver I don't know if you've met a giver in your life a giver is always in a hurry to release and he's saying that you can verify that is God you are talking to because if it is the God of heaven he has the character of being a giver it does not profit him in any way to withhold that which makes for you living a life of victory and a life of grace if he did not spare his son Jesus then it means he's able to give you all things are we together now that's what that scripture is saying that you should not trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who is a giver and that he gives richly and he gives to all men there are people who don't give to all men I hope you know that there are people who only give to their family members there are people who only give to people of their region but this God can give to all men and that he gives liberally hmm. question four are you ready now question one is what does it mean to ask question two is what do you ask question three is from whom do you ask question four how do you ask this is what I want you I want you to listen please how do you ask according to scripture Mark chapter 11 and verse 24 two scriptures in the Bible among many others teach us how to ask wherefore I say unto you look at the protocol now what things soever ye desire when ye pray that means in prayer believe that you have received them and ye shall have them so the Bible tells us that the channel the authorized channel for asking is in prayer are you getting the point now that if you want to ask from the living God it has to be through the channel and the platform of prayer what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receiveth them and ye shall have them James chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 James chapter 1 from verse 5 right so we'll read it now if any of you lack wisdom he says let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given to him the second condition he says that you ask in prayer he says but let him ask in faith if it is the asking that will bring answers he must be asking in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and toast verse 7 please read with me if you're a christian one to read 
For let that man not think. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Why will the Bible record such a harsh statement? Paul is not talking to unbelievers. He's saying there is a condition. You can satisfy a condition that guarantees that you will not receive anything from your asking. He says, let that man not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Wow. So there is a possibility to do what I know to be asking and yet not receive anything from the Lord. What is the condition? If I do not ask in faith. What does it mean to ask in faith? Please look up. To ask in faith means you are not just conscious of what you are asking. You are conscious of who you are talking to. His integrity and his ability. There are two qualities of God that are responsible for faith in the believer. Number one is called his integrity. Number two is called his ability. These are the qualities upon which Bible faith is built on. Are we together? Yes. His integrity means that God is not a man like the Bible says. God is not a man. He does not lie. He is not the son of man that he repents. Are we together? Very, very important. Most people do not know how to ask in faith. They ask doubting. They are hoping that God will respond. They are hoping. You see them tell you this. When the mercy of God moves past their unbelief and brings them results, they tell you, I didn't believe what I was saying. No. You see that now? And that is why many believers do not have anything in their lives. Because they ask, but not in faith. To ask in faith means to ask as touching God's integrity and as touching his ability. To ask as touching his integrity. If you want to receive something from me, you have to verify whether I can mean what I say. Is that true? And so he left us the Bible as a manifesto of his integrity that from Genesis to Revelation, you find out God only does what he says, but if he has said it, he will do it. Are we together now? Once you have not gotten God to say something, forget about any performance. He is bounded by his word. If God speaks to you, you will know for sure that he will bring that which he said to pass because he is a God of integrity. The word integrity comes from the word integer. One, sameness. No bending. Is that true? God has integrity. It is upon his integrity that we can do the things we are doing. If I stand here as a man of God and I'm telling you somebody is going to shout there, do you know how stupid that sounds? If you are not sure of what you are saying, as simple as you see it happen, you try it and let it not happen and you see whether they will invite you back there again. <laughs> you stand before the whole world, intelligent people, and you are saying somebody is going to start running out here. Does that look like a suggestion? No. The God of integrity. The God of integrity. It is by that integrity we can bless and say this week we decree and declare as touching that which we have heard. Ah. Amen. 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 Someone is stepping into prepared blessings. Amen. Amen. Please listen to me. I want you to know that this God that we serve is not trying to test his power. He's not using your life to experiment. You know, there are scientists who work, even though there are, there are drugs that are out, there are still experiments going because he still has a 70% chance. Don't you think God is still trying to verify? No. He's the ancient of days. This is the revelation that must sponsor your asking. I am not coming to a senator. 
I am not coming to the head of a parliament. The president of a nation is only a president of that nation, not a president of everywhere. An ambassador, even a monarch, is a monarch of a predefined geographic region. So when you come to God, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it says, For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must come believing, number one, that he exists. And then number two, that he is a rewarder. It's not just what he does, it's his name, a rewarder. He would never, never, never allow you come to him and go back the same. Can I tell you this? If you do not know the God who defends you, you will never be able to do exploits in life. It takes audacity to do the things that we do. And that audacity is not based on human strength. That, that audacity is not based on philosophy. It's based on the immutability. Ministers of the gospel, please hear me. It will take more than just oratory and the ability to speak well, to drive this kingdom across the hearts of men. It will take you understanding. Moses said, don't send me. I know who Pharaoh is. I, I need to know who you are first. I won't go and stand and make a fool of myself before Pharaoh. Who are you who is talking to me? And God said, good question. I am that I am. So when he stood before Pharaoh, while Pharaoh was shouting, every time fear would want to rise, he would remember. Can I tell you this? You have to know the one who stands behind you. Politicians do this so well. They will tell you, don't touch me. I have a godfather. Businessmen do that. But most times we come fearful and we, are, we stand as though we ran away from his presence we are trying to verify his power we stand before the gates of destiny and say God said I should go forward I don't know if um, he is right but let me take a step uh -uh. the righteous are as bold as a lion listen to me their confidence is because of the God that is behind them. This was what brought the nation of Israel. You would see ordinary simple people, but as soon as their enemies saw them, they said, these people again, this, they are coming again. No Amory, but we are going down for sure. Jericho saw them and said, don't mind their size. There is someone that backs them, shut the gates. Let nothing come in and nothing go out. Do you know the kind of glory God derives from ordinary people who produce results only God can produce? The revelation of his integrity. There are no guarantees in life. My dear people, we live in a world that is full of guarantees. Can you sign that you will be there with me? No. But there is a God that can stand behind you like a mighty terrible one and say let's go and you walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil not because evil is not there because thou art with me that is the basis for my confidence thou art with me not because the evil has gone thou art with me I believe this God I took time I still continue to press into him but I submit to you I took time to ask questions and to verify him Lord you are sending me like the young Jeremiah he cried he said but I am a little boy he said don't say you are a little boy to whoever I send you Jeremiah 1 and verse 6 5 and 6 go don't be afraid of their faces he said I have ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. That is the confidence. Listen, for many of you after this meeting, you will stand up with such confidence and tear the gates of new horizons and step in and, and when, listen, every act of faith looks stupid until the result proves it. Faith is far from the realm of logic. Noah by faith began to build an ark of three stories made of gopher wood for 120 years because he had a voice that rain was coming. You know how they laughed and they mocked him?
how do you ask you ask in prayer you ask by faith you ask by faith now let me tell you something that is very powerful i wish i had the time i would have taught you a very deep mystery in the realm of the spirit there is a kind of prayer that most believers do not know how to pray it's called the prayer of inquiry listen listen there are times in your life i've been teaching this for there are times in your life believers where what you need to pray for is not what you want what you need to pray for is what is stopping the manifestation of what you want listen very carefully most people already know what they want but they do not know what stands as a, an impedance to what they want it is the ministry of the prayer of inquiry it says call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things that you do not know i will show you the ones you already know but there are things you don't know that are connected to the things that you want call on to me and i will answer and i will show you great and mighty things that you do not know there are always steps listen god is a god of patterns and the glory of God always comes as a confirmation that divine patterns have been kept. Are we together now? Every time you see the glory of God manifest in any aspect of a believer's life, it comes as an attestation that the patterns have been kept. Numbers chapter 9 and verse 6. Numbers 9 and verse 6. Here's what it says. Moses was speaking to them. Leviticus, Leviticus 9 and verse 6. I beg your pardon. Leviticus 9 and verse 6. It says, And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. There is always something to do. There is a mystery to understand and engage that is connected to the glory. This is the thing that the Lord commands that you should do. Why is my destiny in one place? Why is the ministry not growing? Why am I investing so much in my children and yet there are no results? You begin to pray the prayer of inquiry and God begins to open you. It's, look, it, this is a deep spiritual mystery. When God comes to you, your, your light has come. This is what Gideon said in Judges chapter 6. We don't have the time, but when you read the first 16 verses, Gideon was crying and was hiding. And when the angel came and appeared to him, he said, why are you giving this kind of salutations? Where is the glory that our father, what suddenly happened? We were once a great people. What happened that brought us down? You would see many times in the Bible, people would go into hiding and ask God questions. What is responsible for this? And God will open their eyes to see it. Prayer of inquiry. It was God's servant that said, one time when the church was not growing, when they started, they were in Kaduna, that they were praying, 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 doing all that they knew to do, and the church was just not growing. And then they declared a three days fast, and while they were praying, he said the Lord asked him to come out, and he lifted up his eyes, and he saw a thick layer of darkness and he said this is the blindfolding layer that misrepresents what you are doing and he asked him to rebuke it that is the prayer of inquiry can i tell you this you can weary yourself at the door when god has not shown you what is wrong you can stand close to your miracle and not see it let me show you a mystery hagar remember when abraham got hagar pregnant because Hagar was mocking Sarah, she was driven out of the house. Is that true? The Bible says she went to a wilderness. And when she was in that wilderness, she was crying. And the young lad was crying. But God only had the voice of the young lad. Read your Bible. The woman was crying. The baby was crying. Only one voice got to heaven. The voice of the baby. Because the baby was not the one crying it was a covenant that was crying 
And God came in response to it. And when he began to talk, he told, he said, listen, let me tell you why this catastrophe has come upon you. Because the reason why you are blessed is you are connected to a relationship. Something has happened and you separated yourself from that relationship. He said, go back to the house of Abraham and submit to your mistress. That is the end of your problem. But for now, since you have inquired, there is an oasis there. She was dying of thirst, whereas there was water there. And she could not see it. If that woman continued going, she would have landed herself in trouble. Both her and Ishmael would have died. But because she inquired, the kings would inquire and say, shall we fight? Shall we overtake? And God would say, go, I'm with you. The prayer of inquiry. Do you know our traditional people still do it? They don't take the risk of doing anything without verification. Call on to me and I will answer. Listen carefully to what I'm telling you. Many of us have not taken our time to ask questions. We just keep saying, oh God, I have been in Lagos for 10 years. And please, just grant me this, grant me that. And God is saying, look, your, your condition is misrepresenting my faithfulness. When someone tries to learn me by looking at your life, they will get a poor representation of me. You're making it look like I'm not able to come and help you. There is something you must do. And then the glory of the Lord would come. That something is what you need to pray for. There are people that God will give them one instruction. And tell them, you know what? Carry a seed. Go and meet this person. Greet him and let him pray for you. That is it. And just that one instruction can open you up to another door in ministry. Listen, God is speaking to us because remember, God wants us to experience the fullness of joy. And let me tell you something, if, if no one ever told you that results can give joy, think again. In the presence of results, you can find joy. You don't need results to have joy, but you need results to have the fullness. You can have joy in the midst of pain. Though the olive tree may not blossom, remember that scripture? He said, yet I will rejoice. But if it is the fullness of joy, Jesus said, hitherto you have asked for nothing. He says, ask that you will receive, that your joy might be complete. Show me a man of God who does not rejoice in the presence of God when God is increasing you and the work of the gospel through your hand is thriving. Show me a mother who does not rejoice when you see your children rising and doing well you were joyous even before you had them but now that they are coming back with distinctions that is more than happiness in as much as happiness is circumstantial fullness of joy also depends on what happens to you you can have joy whether you are rich or poor but you cannot have the fullness of joy when you are poor, I guarantee you. Are we together? Yes. There is nobody who stands and says, dance with me over nothing. When you see the faithfulness of God, you rejoice. Abraham and Sarah had joy without Isaac, but they did not have the fullness of joy. When Isaac came, they named him, he laughed. I said, for all that I've heard, will laugh with me. Was that the first time she was laughing? There is a kind of laugh that comes from the fullness of joy in the presence of results. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. A table before me that you have granted me rest round about. Hopefully tomorrow we'll look at the subject of receiving. I'll be showing you what it means to receive. Because if you know how to ask and you do not know how to receive, you cannot have. In this kingdom, you only have what you have received. Receiving and having are not the same. Anything you do not have is because you have not yet received. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have. To have means the experiential manifestation. 
receiving is a spiritual mystery that you must understand how to receive and then you also have to know you need to know how God answers prayers if you don't know how God answers prayer you will not know how to when to stop praying over that issue when you are driving because you know the destination you know when to stop your car no matter how you are speeding you can get to a point where you know I've gotten it you cannot keep praying indefinitely over an issue it's proof of ignorance the the farthest place in nigeria would take two or three days to arrive there is that true under normal circumstances you should arrive in two days not more than that by the time you are five days and you have not arrived we have to verify what you are doing is that true you can't leave your house and five days later you are still roaming around where are you? I'm, I think I'm somewhere around in Baden. I'm not sure. Describe what you can see. Honestly, I'm not even seeing clearly. It's in the night. You are most likely going around the same place. The movement from Egypt to the promised land took 40 years. No, that 40 years was not the distance. If you measure it, it does not take 40 years to get there. In 40 days, they would have arrived. But something can be added that elongates your time. This is, you need to understand how to pray because a journey of two days can become 10 years under a certain condition if you do not know how to receive. We have to pray. Ye have not because ye ask not. There are many people who have been in this city for many years and yet you keep wondering lord this is unfair people just come and you lift them and you honor them and they love you and serve you how about our family and yet the bible this is where jealousy and anger comes from is the natural response of the unregenerate man in the presence of frustration the moment one who has not really been worked on by the spirit let me tell you the truth no matter how good you are it takes god to help you when you continue to have indefinite frustrations things like jealousy and envy will become the order of the day the brothers of joseph wanted to kill him because he was the only one who had that dream if all of them had the dream they will be partners in progress but because only one person had it they say we must kill you can i tell you this everything you see in the life of anybody today that you admire by grace there are dimensions of it that is yours for the taking if you know how to ask it says ye have not because ye ask not whether it is prosperity the workings of the spirit increase favor new levels dimensions of grace order influence whatever it is these are tools that we need to have to be able to lift up the name of Jesus and let the nation see him. And God is not withholding it from us. But we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. We do not know how to have because we do not know how to ask. In this conference, among the many things that the speakers have said, God is opening our eyes. Number one, do not ignore the need for results in your life there is a kind of laughter that only comes when you are in the presence of results are we together no matter how sad and gloomy you are there is a kind of there is something that when God does when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion he said number one we're like them that have you seen a man who is awake and yet is like he's dreaming? And then, verse 2, he says, Then was our mouth, what? He didn't say we laughed. Laughter came and entered our mouth. He said our mouth were filled with laughter. And our tongue with singing. There are songs you must sing whether you're a musician or not. There are things that when God does, even if you keep quiet, your mouth will not be quiet. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you.
as long as Let me wrap up with one scripture. Acts chapter 8. We begin our reading from verse 5. Acts chapter 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. The people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing everybody say hearing and seeing if it is God you don't hear alone you see also many of you have been hearing God will lift God will bless it's time for your eyes to see hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what were the miracles unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed read verse 8 if you are a christian one to read one more time this kind of joy was not yet in the city there was joy but now there was great joy in the presence of results Philip went down there and the people were gloomy and the people were looking and said, just preach. And while he was preaching, he said, this Jesus people again. And while they were talking, they were possessed people, they were sick people. And Philip said, just be patient, keep listening to me. And while he was preaching Christ, all of a sudden on that crusade ground, something began to happen. You can imagine the mother of the lame person who was healed in that crusade. Lord, I know that this is impossible. I will still thank you anyway. And suddenly, her son says, something is happening to my legs. Mama, can I try walking? And he says, try. And the Bible says there was great joy in the presence of results. That means there can be great joy by this night, by tomorrow in your life. Because of something that the Lord does, like God moves in your life. Can I tell you sincerely? In, in a bit of my work with God, I have seen God do phenomenal and remarkable things. The, the, have you gotten to a state where you both laugh and cry at the same time? There are miracles that when God does, it's your tears that will testify. And then your laughter will show that it's not tears of sorrow. It is tears of joy. When the Lord again turned the captivity of Zion. By the time someone calls you this night and says, come and meet me tomorrow. You say, what for? He says, as soon as you are done from church, just come to my house. And you get there and you are seeing people who ordinarily you would not see. And they say, sit down. The Lord gave us an instruction. From Tuesday, he repeated it. Thursday, and he repeated it Saturday. That from now till the end of 2022, we should bless you every month. Then you sit down there and wondering, sorry, I hope I'm the right person so that you don't play with my emotions. And they say, you are. You leave that place, and even when you get to your house, you will still keep moving. And say, Lord, what is this you are doing? And God tells you, I, I am determined to see that you have the fullness of joy. When you come to church under that condition, even opening prayer, you'll be kneeling down and singing before they even start anything. At that point, it does not matter who is looking at you. I have seen God do things in my life. Listen. Believe me when I tell you, there are things God can do. God can take the prayer request of a people and give it to you. If you know how to ask. God can lose the loins of kings for your sake and cause territories to entreat your favor. I know what I'm saying. God can carry the achievements of a lifetime of many and give it to you. 
tonight I came to speak over your life. You call this the fullness of joy. It is time for your life to truly have an evidence. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Let me speak over your life. Words are powerful. The ministry of priesthood grants you the opportunity to make petitions to God even on behalf of men. So that if and when they do not know how to do the asking, you can stand by the privilege of priesthood and pray for them. Jesus himself prayed for the disciples. He said, Peter, Satan had desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art strengthened, thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Paul would bow his knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus and pray over the church. In this season where there seems to be darkness and gloominess, where there are all kinds of negative reports, where the reality of the times look like people are plunging into economic, you know, situations and all kinds of things. People are discouraged. There seems to be an onslaught of evil everywhere. Like never before. It is in that darkness that he says the glory of the Lord shall rise upon you. Then he says Gentiles shall come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the message of the God of heaven, I speak over your life that beginning from this night, the kind of results that these hands lifted have never handled, I call upon my God who is your God, step into that realm of results now. Step into that realm of results now. Just help those under the anointing. I prophesy to systems and structures that must open up for the word of God to prevail over your life. That your joy be full in the name of Paraskudiva Shanakatiata. Krepeketeka In the name that is above all names, by the privilege of priesthood. I speak to gates and doors. Ephata, be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephata, be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Every human agent who needs to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit for your sake, I decree and declare wherever they are across lagos across this nation across africa we call them by prophecy in the name of jesus they show up in your life hear me that which represents shame and reproach that makes you to cry and say lord i love you but can you bring me answers and complete my joy i release my faith with you in the name that is above all names that after this conference you return with testimonies after testimony can i be sincere with you there are many of us here the issues in our lives that cause us pain is largely related to finance and supplies that is the honest truth. Remember, we are people who love Jesus. So we are not idolizing money. But 
when Satan sees a people who are passionate about God, one of the ways he distracts them is to manipulate the economy of that territory so that the time you would spend learning God and growing, you now spend it laboring, waking up in the morning and sleeping late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus. That embargo that will not let you step into the supplies of heaven in spite of the fact that you are educated, help please. In spite of Aparos Kadina Kata, by this anointing, I place a mantle upon your life that as you leave this place tonight, help them please. Strange favor, let it be open for you. Strange favor, favor upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, don't miss tomorrow's service in the morning. But tonight, let me speak over your life. There is a grace for visibility. Just because you are gifted does not mean your territory will know you. Just because you are anointed and you have value does not mean those around you will be able to see what God is doing and place a demand. There are many gifted people. There are many anointed men and women of God but that covering, that veil, covers them and they cannot find visibility. Neither do men light a lamp and keep it under a bushel, but they keep it on a lampstand. Let me pray for you. Whether in ministry, whether in business, whatever has covered you, that you will not rise in the name of Jesus, I tear off that veil. In the name of Jesus, I tear off that veil. In the name of Jesus, I tear off that veil. Atmosphere, sheep now, chains be broken. Hallelujah. My sister, that lady wearing green with hair, lift your hands where you are. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I command that oppression over your life to go now, never to return to you. Please don't miss tomorrow's service because there are, there are things that God wants to deal with and take away and give you peace by all means. Don't let this year be like last year. Just because a prophetic word comes does not automatically mean. There are many of us, it does not matter what they tell you. Every year looks like the other one. God wants to break you out of that circle and grant you the liberty that makes for the sons in light. In the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to do the work of an evangelist tonight. I want you to go and invite everyone, your family members, tomorrow morning here. I'm going to be speaking over your life. I will be sharing with you what it means to receive. For some of you, this is the one thing you have been praying and crying to God for. How do I, why are things not coming? I need to know how to receive. The light of God's word is coming. To open you up in addition to all that you have heard from the various men of, and women of God in songs in word make sure you open up your heart don't just say amen and waste the opportunity are we together can you lend me two minutes to make an altar call would that be fine please no movement there are people here who are saying apostle whilst hearing you talk about this asking I've been assuming that I'm a Christian and I'm a child of God I've been assuming that my ways are right with God I've been here speaker after speaker listening to men and women of God challenge me I desire to walk in the reality of the life of God you are here you are in the overflow you are following from wherever whatever nation I want to give you an opportunity right now two people in one at a time is gone 
the first set is those who are saying apostle i want to make this decision sincerely for the first time and i want to mean it this time around number two those who are saying apostle i love jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire i need restoration i'm going to count one to five as i ask you to boldly come and stand before me here i have just a minute or two to pray for you and when i make that call don't be ashamed you came for this conference for an encounter as i count one to five i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain let's celebrate them as they come one run to jesus anybody allow you sit back when the Holy Ghost is asking you to come he's giving you a new beginning three don't be ashamed you're standing before Jesus come come to Jesus apostle I want to win that war tonight I'm tired of living my life my own way come come I came with a friend I want to come out but I think I'm ashamed come this is a family and those following in your homes you're following by way of a broadcast this is your opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life wherever you are you're in your room you're in your office as I pray with them I want you to join even if you're watching the rebroadcast this is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. May I request that you lift your, your hand, your right hand if you can high above your head as I lead you to this prayer. Jesus is right here. This is the greatest miracle literally that is happening here tonight. I want you to say this. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god from this day and forever the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i declare that i'm born again i'm a child of god I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones you have brought them by your spirit I declare by the authority of scriptures that your sins are forgiven and I decree and declare that he grants you a new beginning as you have declared the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness. You only go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Now please help me. Um, I want you to turn back. You will see counselors. There's a, a placard there with new converts. I'm told you can follow here too. So you use either of the aisles or you just follow. Let's celebrate them as they go. They'll have your details very quickly and you'll be back to your seat. May the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name.